So yeah, I'm Megan. I'm a graduate student at the Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology. Um, I'm working in the computational pathogenomics group, so mostly on um, ancient genomes from single species. I uh, have been doing some work on oral microbes um, that contribute to dental caries development, as well as some other things. So um, yeah, I'm really happy to be here today to get to talk to you a little bit about Git and GitHub. So um, without further ado, uh, we can get started. And if at any point you have any questions, feel free to interrupt. Um, sorry. Okay, so let's get started. So what is Git, first of all? Um, this is a version control system. So it's a way of tracking changes to files um, over time. This can um, be any type of file, but most often text files um, and can include code or data, but basically um, keeping track of changes that you've made over time. And if any of you are like me, you may have a folder somewhere on your laptop that looks something like this with ever more insanely named files. Um, and this is not a great way of keeping track of the changes that we're making, obviously, especially to code. So this is the problem that Git and other version control systems are trying to solve. Yeah, so for tracking changes in files over time, you can use this for everything from scripts to simple um, CSV files, um, even small FASTA files with data in them. Um, we can, uh, Git enables restoration of old file versions, um, as well as modification of previous changes. Um, and it's also really useful for tracking contributions made by multiple people over time. Um, so collaborating on projects. So what is GitHub? Um, GitHub is a remote hosting service for version controlled repositories. Um, and it's a field standard approach for sharing your data, your code, all of the files associated with your project. Um, it's really nice to work with because it has a GUI, a graphical user interface that's really user friendly. Um, and so a lot of people in the field are publishing things on GitHub. Um, but it's not the only open source alternative for version control data. Um, another is GitLab. Um, just to, you know, put that out there, there are other options as well. So why do we use Git and GitHub? Um, first of all, and primarily to keep a deep, deep backup of our work. So this means that we're keeping track of um, all versions of the files that we save over time. In, in a way, it's sort of like taking a snapshot of your directory, um, the folder that you're working in at different points of, in time, and you can keep track of um, everything in that file, that directory at that point. Um, it's also useful for reverting to an old version or for modifying previous changes that you've made to files. Um, it's really useful for multiple collaborators to work simultaneously. So if you've ever worked on a Google Doc with more than one person at the same time, at the same time, changing things, it kind of doesn't really work, right? And the same is true for code. So it's helpful to use um, Git and GitHub for that. Um, also for testing new code, um, sort of piloting changes so that we can um, not mess up the, the kind of master version of our documents. Um, and also really importantly, it's helpful for working toward more open reproducible science in making our data, code, and results public. Um, so I have just a little graphical representation of how um, GitHub works, um, and we'll walk through it step by step, but we'll also see this in the practical. So um, feel free to interrupt me if there are questions. So we have kind of two parts that are working together, um, your local machine, so your laptop or your cluster that you're working on locally, and then the online ser GitHub server. And we can sort of pass data back and forth between these two um, partitions using different commands, which we're going to go over later. So on our local machine, we are tracking files in a directory, so a folder on our local machine. And we have both tracked and untracked files. We don't really have to worry so much about untracked files for the purposes of this workshop, but um, you can choose to have files in your directory 
that you are not keeping track of the versions of. For instance, if they're like way too big to track. Um, so GitHub, um, Git will also keep track of which files you've modified over time. So if you edit a file, it knows that it goes from sort of the unmodified state to a modified state. And that's something that it will keep track of. And then if you want to actually commit the modified state into a, um, a version, then you will stage it. So you can think of the staging area as sort of all the changes you've made that you're ready to package up into one commit, one snapshot of your directory. And again, we're gonna see this later, but I think for me, it's useful just to like have it laid out ahead of time so that we can sort of understand what we're doing as we go along. So when all our files are staged and we're ready to go, we can make a commit. So a snapshot of the directory and then sort of all of those files go back to a sort of unmodified state. And we keep track of the changes that we're making again until we make another commit. Okay, so we're ready to get started with the practical part. So if anyone has any questions, now would be a good time or we can just dive right in. Okay, it seems like everyone's good, but if not, feel free to interrupt. Um, so hopefully you all have your, um, your terminal windows open. Um, and we're gonna start first with setting up some SSH keys um, so that we don't have to type passwords over and over again. This is just some sort of one-time setup that we need to do for this system. And you may need to do it again on your local laptop if you wanna follow up and use GitHub later. Um, so SSH keys replace um, passwords with a file that contains a cryptographic password. Um, and it's a very common thing when you're working with servers. Basically, when you want to pass data to GitHub, you compare a public key, which is shared with GitHub, to a private key on your laptop. And um, these are compared, and there's an authentication process that happens. But the upside is that you don't have to worry about typing passwords all the time. Um, you can also reuse these key files. Um, you can copy them to your personal laptop later if you want. Okay, so everyone can start your terminals and we'll get going. So first of all, um, we need to activate the Conda environment for today's session so that we have all of the tools that we need installed. So you can do that by typing Conda activate git eager. And if I'm going too fast at any point, just ask me to back up a slide or something. Um, so now we're going to make our SSH key using the command that I have here, SSH keygen, um, and just replace um, this with your own email address. So I'll give you a second to do that. Okay. Um, when you press enter, you should get a message saying generating the key pair um, and enter a file to save the key. I would suggest you just save it in the default location so you can just press enter without typing anything there. And you should get something asking for a passphrase. Um, I would recommend just skipping that. But of course, you can enter a passphrase if you want. And you should get something that looks like this. Um, when the key generation is successful. Okay, so we can check to see if it worked by um, first changing directories into this directory, SSH. Um, back one slide. Oh, yep, yep, sorry. So you don't have to type anything here. This is just um, the message you should get if your key was successfully generated. Is that okay? Cool. I think it's okay to go ahead. Okay, if there's technical issues, um, James can also help um, with that. Cool. 
So while they're figuring that out, we can just check that our key generation worked, like I said, by changing into this directory. And as you talked about yesterday in bare bones bash, you can list um, all the files that begin with ID. Um, and you should see some files there now. Back to Keygen. Okay. So it's just this first line up here. Okay, the conda command at the beginning, I'll just put into the chat so that everyone has it. And then I'm just also going to type out the keygen command in case people are having some issues, they can um, do that at your own pace. If um, you've gone onto your compu node, there's a black screen. If you just click a couple of times, it should uh, load again. So you can see your terminal. There's a sort of screen saver thing. Ah, OK. And also, I will send a link on the chat to all the slides, so you can also have that open next to you as well. Um, so there's a comment that you can't see the password screen. Um, you mean it's not asking for a passphrase? Um, James, any ideas? Uh, that's why I think it's for the login screen. Ah, oh, okay. So if, you, if it's a black screen, just click. Uh, if you do not, if you're not asked, but after the keygen command, um, try cancelling and type it again. Remember, you have to have the, both quotes, because if you don't have both quotes, it won't um, think that you've completed the command yet. So just press Control C to cancel it. Could maybe everyone who's um, successfully gotten the keygen like, done, could you give me a thumbs up? Um, you can do that with the reactions, like the smiley face button, just to see how people are doing. OK, looks like. Maybe half. Uh, it worked for her without the quotation marks. Um, yes, did I, it should be SSH key gen like on the slide. I might have made a typo in the chat but it should be SSH, not SHH, keygen. And if you're still in the bare bones bash directory and you wanna check um, your uh, home directory and the SSH um, directory, you can, yeah, CD followed by the tilde backslash dot SSH. So I think in the interest of time, we can move on unless people are still having issues. I have a question. Yeah, sure. Um, do we have to type this email that is registered the same in the uh, GitHub account or can we use another email? Um, I think you can use any email. So the SSH is not, um, it's independent of GitHub. Uh, it's just how, it's just a way of knowing who is. Ah, oh, okay. This is a good point to know. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to move on now, but if you're still having issues, then see James at the back for assistance. Okay. So as I said, you can check that those files are generated um, like this. Um, and then we can actually check that the SSH program is actually running. 
Um, you don't have to do this necessarily. It should be running, but you can check that using this command, the eval command, and you should get something that says like agent, blah, 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 whatever. Um, so you can type that. And so as long as that's running, then the real important part is to give SSH your key to record. So using SSH add um, followed by this path. Okay, so if everyone has done the ssh add command, then we can move on. So now we have to actually go to GitHub. So if you can open your web browser and navigate to your GitHub account, then we need to give the ssh key to our accounts. So you can do that by going to settings. So there should be a drop down menu in the upper right corner, like where your face is or your symbol, and you can click on settings. And then you should navigate to SSH and GPG keys, new SSH key. You can give a name of the key. So something like spam summer school would be fine. Or, yeah, question. Okay. Um, you can give your key a name and then you need to paste the public key that we generated on our laptops. So you can do that with this command, um, cat the file, and then you can manually copy and paste that um, into your web browser. And then you just press the add SSH key. So once you've done that, maybe also give me a thumbs up so that I know how people are doing. Or if you need me to go back a slide, let me know. Can I show you my my screen? Uh, I don't know what is my error. Um, I think that it's probably best if you go talk to James. So the help corner is kind of in the bottom right of your screen. Then he can address that for you. Okay. Okay, are people having success or? Uh, yeah, okay, on the Dendi Cloud, it's kind of weird. You have to actually like right click, copy, right click, paste. So if you're on Mac, the command C, command V that you're probably using won't work. Sorry, Maria, I don't understand. Oh, okay, James is on it. <laughs> Okay, so hopefully that worked for most people. If not, you can ask James, but I'm gonna move on now. Okay, so you can check that your key setup worked by typing this command, ssh-t get at github.com. You should get a message that says you've successfully authenticated. You might get an error message saying something like the authenticity can't be established, but you can ignore that. You can just say yes and keep going.
Okay, so hopefully that worked for most people. Um, so now we can get started with the commands that we actually want to learn in this session. Um, and the first thing we want to do is to actually make our own GitHub repository for the activities that we're going to be doing. So hopefully you have your GitHub page open in your web browser from adding the SSH key. Um, and now we want to make our own repository. So you can do that with this green button that says new. Um, so under your repositories. Um, and then you need to add a repository name. So it can be anything. Um, you can check the button that says add a readme file and create the repository. So you can name it however you like. And then for the rest of the slides, um, I'm working in my repository that GitHub named Vigilant Octo Journey. And whenever you see those words, you can just replace it with the name of your own repository. Um, so some people, uh, thanks Nikolai for the slides. So if people get behind because of debugging, you can access the slides there um, and all the commands that you need are also there. So you can follow along. So once people have made their own repository, maybe you can just also give me a little um, reaction thumbs up so that I know we're all doing well. Okay, I see a couple. There's a hand raised. I'm hoping that that's a good sign. <laughs> okay, maybe we'll just take uh, another minute or so while people are getting caught up. And if anyone has a question now, you can just unmute and ask. Or James is also available for help. Oh, I just said that you're available for help if people need yeah. to. Okay. okay, are we good? So I think we're good. Um, if not, yeah, you can, you know where to find help. Okay, so now for the practical part, we're gonna be working in our introduction to GitHub directory. So you can change to that file location using this command, CD, volume, blah, 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 introduction to GitHub. So change to that directory. I'm also going to put it in the chat in case people are catching up. Great. And once you're there, we can get started. So the first, uh, I'm gonna let James answer Maria's question. So, um, The first command we're gonna learn is git clone. So git clone is how we copy a remote repository, an online repository to our local machine. So you're gonna clone the repository that you just made on your account um, to the Dendy Cloud. So you can do that by navigating to your own um, GitHub, not mine, um, and into the repository you just made and you use this code drop-down button um, to find the address that you need. And we're gonna use SSH because we just set up the SSH keys. Um, and then you're gonna copy this address. So you can do that just by clicking the little button here on the right. And once you copied that, you use git clone, and then you paste the address um, into your terminal window. And again, use right click um, paste rather than command V if you're on Mac. When you press enter, you should get a message saying that you're cloning into your repository and all the objects that are there are being copied to your local machine. Great. So the second thing that we are gonna learn is git add. 
So this command adds a new or modified file to your staging area. So if you remember our little schematic, the staging area is sort of all of the modified files that you want to collect, that you want to put into your next commit or snapshot of your directory. Um, so we can do that. First, you need to change directories into the directory you just cloned. So this name is going to be however you named your own directory. Um, then we need to actually make a modification in that directory. So you can, for instance, echo test file um, and uh, put that output into a new file, like file a.txt. So this will create file A with this text inside. You can also modify an existing file there. So you should all have a readme file. Um, and you can echo just an example repo. This sort of um, symbol here says, don't erase what's already in the file. Just add the text um, afterwards. And so then finally, you can use git add. Um, file a txt to actually stage those um, that modification to this specific file. So some people are having trouble accessing the volume directory where the where we're supposed to be doing our work for this session. Is anyone else able to change directories into the introduction to GitHub? Not sure people are having success or no. Okay, people are having issues with this file path. Um, I'm not connected to the file system currently, but I can just go back to that slide and show you what the command should be. In case there was a typo. Okay, James is checking. Sorry about that. That's okay. We're getting also permission denied errors. Uh, okay, it, it won't be changing to vol volume. So it's volume, not vol. No, no, the first one is vol. So it's basically the first half of that command, just not the two be directed to GitHub. And then someone could basically. Yeah. So we want everyone to change now into this directory. And if someone could just, uh, I'm going to say, uh, Maria. Can you post the contents of that file if we run NF, LX? Or someone? Oh, and someone's sharing, someone's sharing the screen. Yeah, I'm not sure. Oh, um, is it? Ah, there's nothing else. OK, we're going to change plan. Can you change into your downloads folder? So uh, CD, so Megan can put this. Yeah. Uh, then tilde, slash download. So um, you're gonna work in there instead. Okay, sorry, there's some issue with the file system. So we're we're modifying our plans yeah. <laughs> slightly. But you should be still okay to find me. I'm gonna find the left. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so are people able to 
change directories into their downloads directory. Thumbs up. Okay, good. So we have a new working plan. Sorry about that. Um, you might want to make some folder in this directory to um, store the data from this session. So you could do that using this command that I'm going to put in the chat right now. Um, and if you want to do that, you can make this directory and then you can change into it. But if you don't want to do that, you can also just work in your... So some of you got into the original directory and some didn't. That is weird. And for the purposes of this, it doesn't really matter where you do your work. So. If you can access that directory, then do the following steps there. Otherwise, we'll work in these um, directories in our downloads folder. So, okay, so hopefully that's clear and we're all good. Um, I'm going to just go back to the git clone step since we had some issues. So make sure that everyone has some time to actually clone their directory to this new location. Okay. And so once you had a chance to do that, we'll go back to where we actually are now with git add. So you can use these commands to modify, to create a new file, file A, and to modify your readme file. And then we will add file A. Okay, there's issues with copying and pasting from Denby. Um, and you've tried like actually right clicking and not using keyboard shortcuts. If that's the case, then you might just have to like actually physically type the address. Okay, if this step didn't work, then... Okay, so copying pasting to Denby does not work for you. Um, we're gonna have to get James to address that, um, but he has stepped out to try to figure out the file system issues. So maybe just hang on and follow along um, as you can. So have um, has anyone been able to add, to do the git add step? Maybe give me a thumbs up. Okay, a couple people. Just going to give it a second. We're having some Okay, so James is back to help the people that are still having some issues. Um, so uh, if you remember, we you should have create created your own GitHub repository that probably has a different name to mine. So whenever you see the text Vigilant Octo Journey, you need to replace it with the name of your own repository. So once you've done the clone step, you can see what, um, what files and folders are in that directory using ls, and you should see the name of the directory that you cloned, which will be different than Vigilant Octo whatever. Okay, so hopefully the people who are still working can catch up, but I'm going to move on and you can just follow along on the slides. Okay, so the next command we're going to learn is git status. Um, and this allows us to check which files have been locally changed, staged, etc. 
So if you run that in your own directory, um, you should see just get status. You should see something like this. The branch you're on, um, changes that are staged to be committed, and changes that have not been staged for commit. So if you did the last um, slide correctly, you should see that file a.txt is staged to be committed and um, the readme file, which we modified, has not yet been added. So hopefully if that worked, um, you can now try to add the readme.markdown as well and then check the status again. So maybe you remember how to do that or I'll put the command in the chat as soon as I can find my cursor. Great. So the next thing we're going to learn is how to actually make a commit. So um, a commit is, like I said, when we package or save the changes into a single, uh, single commit with a message that sort of reflects those changes. So each commit will have a unique hash ID that won't change, and these are going to be stored forever in the history of our repository, so we can revert back to them as we need. So to do this, we can type git commit dash m for um, message, and we need to add a little message. So for our commit, maybe we say add example file or modify readme. This can be anything that will help you later down the line. And at this point, you might see a warning that your name and email were configured automatically, but you can sort of ignore that for now. So I'm just going to type that in the chat for anyone who might be a few slides behind. And once you've made a commit successfully, maybe give me a little reaction thumbs up so that I know that we're on track. OK, great. So next, we're going to go over how to push the changes that we've made from our local repository to our remote repository. So from our laptop to um, the online GitHub. And so this is pretty easy. You just type git push. And you should see a message like this. So it will uh, push all all the file I'm, I'm modifying, not only this file, but all the file in this directory, right? So what will be pushed is anything that you committed. So mm -hmm. if you had, for instance, made a modification to like readme and mm -hmm. not added and commit, it, commit that, then this would not be pushed to the remote repository. But if you followed everything, then you should be pushing all the changes that we made. So to the readme as well as to file A. Hmm. Okay. So this is pushing our most recent commit. Anyone else have questions? Great. Git push asked me to give a username and password. Okay, that probably means that, um, did you have some issues with the SSH key setup? I thought that it succeeded, but mm. I must have. You can try with your GitHub username and password. Otherwise, you might have to do the SSH key setup again. OK. Yeah, it said that support for password authentication was removed in 2021. Yeah, so you can still use a password, um, but it's kind of hard to find. So on your own repository, you have to go into settings and then down um, you should see a menu on the left side and if you scroll all the way down to developer settings and click on that there's a thing that says personal access tokens 
And these are sort of like passwords that you can use, but you have to actually like type that in. So you'll have to generate a personal access token. Um, but James can also help with that. It could be also, did you, um, when you cloned your directory, did you clone with SSH or did you, you might have used the HTTPS option. So that could also be an issue. I may very well have done that. Yeah, that would make sense. Yeah, so you can just start over or like if you need to remove the directory and start again, you can like remove it with RM and yep. um, do dash FR for like force recursive for that directory um, and then start over. Okay, cool. So if that worked, then the next thing we're gonna do is get poll. So we just pushed um, our modifications from our local machine to our remote repository. Now we're gonna pull, um, download any commits from our remote repository to our local machine. Why can't I remove? Uh, I think you're still unmuted. Um, so you can do that with this command, git pull. And you should see something like this that says git pull already up to date because you just pushed all the changes to your um, to your remote repository and the remote repository is not different from your local version. However, if you had made a change to your remote repository and you can do this if you want to follow along but you don't have to, you can actually say edit the readme file on GitHub by clicking this little um, pencil button and you can type something, my name is Megan, blah, 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 make a change to that. And then when you do git pull again, um, you'll download those changes um, to your local directory. But again, you don't, don't feel the need that you have to do that. Okay, so I know that was fast and some people followed and some maybe had some technical problems, but you can always go back. Um, but these are the six commands that we've learned so far. How to clone directories, to add files, to check the status, to make commits, and to push and pull um, between our remote and um, local directories. So the next thing I wanna talk about is working collaboratively. Um, in other words, how can we make changes without interfering with other people's work? And GitHub's a really handy tool for collaborating on code and projects like this. Um, so I wanna introduce the concept of a branch. Um, so this is a copy of the main repository that exists within the repository. So in this little diagram, we have a master branch and we've made a little feature branch or a big feature branch. So they sort of exist in parallel. This is useful for editing and prototyping files without breaking the main files. Um, and this is really good for working with small team projects. So the next thing that we need to learn is how to switch between branches. And you can do this with this command git switch. So in your browser tab, um, you can actually make a new branch on GitHub. So on the left-hand side, you should see something that looks like this that says main. Um, and if you use this drop-down menu, you can switch between branches or create a new branch. So you can call it whatever you want. I called mine dev for development. Um, and then you can hit create branch dev from main. You can also make a new branch directly on the command line um, with git switch. Um, you use this C flag to make a new branch um, and you can name it something like new feature. So maybe everyone can try that, git switch dash C new dash feature. Awesome, thanks for the thumbs up. It's helpful to know that things are working. <laughs> cool. I'll just type that in the chat in case people Okay, so 
Um, we can also switch between branches. So you can go back to your main branch using just git switch main. So without the C flag. But for now, um, I want to talk about how we would make changes to a, a branch. So say that we're on our new branch. We used git switch feature. We changed from main back to our branch. Um, we can make a change to our readme file. So here I'm adding the text, what is a vigilant octo journey anyway, to our readme. Um, when you run git status, you'll see that you're on branch new feature. Um, and that there are changes that you haven't yet staged for commit. So we've modified README. Um, you don't necessarily have to follow along right now, but this is sort of a, a cautionary tale. So make sure that you commit changes to save them to the branch that you want to, to save them to. So assuming that I made a change to README and then switched back to main, um, if I ran git status again, I would see something like this, that my readme file has actually been modified. Um, so you modified the readme on your branch and you didn't commit those changes. So you be very careful sort of which branch you're actually making modifications on. Um, we usually want to do it on dev rather than, or new feature rather than committing those to our main branch. So instead, what we should have done was um, git switch to the new feature branch. We would have actually added the changes we made to the readme file and then committed them using git commit m update readme and then push those um, to our remote repository. Just a little note, um, if the branch was created on the command line, um, you have to actually um, use this command to set the upstream uh, for this branch, um, but GitHub will actually prompt you to do that. So in case you're following along with that. OK, so the next thing I want to talk about is code peer review. Um, so pull requests. A pull request is when you want to propose changes to a branch from another branch. Um, and they're also known as PRs. So you request to pull your changes, for instance, from the development branch into the main branch. Um, and this allows others to actually review the changes you're requesting, make suggestions um, before you merge those changes into the main branch. So if you're all sort of um, up to date with us, you can follow along. Otherwise, it's fine just to watch on the slides and I'll explain what's happening. So when you have made a change to a branch, you'll see a sort of automatic thing pop up on your GitHub page saying that your branch has recent pushes. Um, and you can hit this button, compare and pull request if you want to merge those into a different branch, for instance, main. So you should see something like this um, with your message, and then you can actually leave a comment. And it will tell you if you're able to merge the changes from your branch into the main repository or not automatically. Um, if you scroll down a little bit, you'll actually get to see all the changes that were made to the file. So to review what's actually being proposed in terms of changes to the branch. Um, and then you'll see that you can actually merge the pull request using this little green button if there's sort of no conflicts. Um, this is also where you can write comments and request changes. So if you um, leave a comment, you can, for instance, ask for a change to the code or something like that. Um, and then once you've successfully merged your pull request, you'll get something like this. Saying that the, brand, um, the merge request was successful and the branch can be closed. Um, say someone requests changes um, uh, during review, how do you implement those? So you can push those changes to your branch um, and the PR will automatically track the changes that you're making. And then you can request a re review. 
So what if you um, disagree with the requested changes or you're working with a big team where sort of working with all these branches can get a little bit complicated. Um, this is another feature of GitHub repositories called forks. So a fork is an independent copy of a repository um, that actually lives outside of the main repository. Um, and you can edit things without breaking them or take a project in a different direction, for instance. It also, um, as the slide says, provides an extra layer of protection um, so that people aren't uh, sort of changing your files as much. So here on my repository, um, over here you can see any forks and my repository hasn't been forked yet. But if you are following along and you wanna try making a fork, you can actually go to my repository. Um, the address is here, github slash Megan E. Michael slash Vigilant Octo Journey. And if you wanna make a fork, you can use this drop-down menu to actually create a fork and this will be your own copy of that repository. You can also pull requests into, to and from forks. So you can make changes on your, your fork and then request that those changes be reincorporated into the base repository, which is a handy feature. Um, so just a little bit about reviewing pull, rep um, pull requests. So you can do that in the pull request tab um, and there's a blue button and review changes. Uh, and then you have a chance to look at all of the changes that have been made, for instance, on someone else's fork and they're asking to merge those back into the base repository. You can leave comments like this little video is showing, um, make suggestions, ask for changes, that sort of thing. and then merging forks. So once a collaborator approves all your changes, they can actually merge those back into the main branch. Um, so we have a little practical task here um, so that you can use to try uh, your, your hand at what we've just learned. Um, maybe you can get started on trying to accomplish these tasks and we'll see where James is at for the next part of the session. I mean, I don't know. Okay, yeah, so if we can all take five or ten minutes to try to do this, and I just realized that there's a typo on this slide, um, so I'm going to fix that, and then you should be good to go. And if you have any questions, of course, ask me or James. I'm just going to stop share briefly and resume my share so that the changes update here.
now's also a time if you had some issues with a previous step, um, I can help you. So feel free to unmute or to um, put something in the chat. Uh, okay, um, I'm not muted. And okay. um, so, who are the people who said they couldn't access the 2B introduction to Git um, directory? Could someone raise their hand or say something in the, in the chat? I can access to the my key. But I mean, when there was one task where you had, or one step where you had to CD into vol volume to be introduction to GitHub. And some people said they couldn't access it. Sorry. Um, Sorry, I need to find out why that is because I can still access it. So, permission. Okay, Merlin, I'm going to temporarily steal your VM. So just give me a couple of minutes. Um, then for Maria, why is it your account? Uh, it could be the account either. I think I've got to keep my my key contesting. Ah. But I, okay. I think Maria, could you paste your the command you're running because that looks very strange. I don't know what this bang. I oh, know. Okay. Uh, sorry. Yeah. So Merlin, I'll take a thing in a minute. For Wait. Paste what? For Maria and anyone who else is getting permission tonight, it may be that during testing we, I accidentally left my um, public and private key in your SSH directory. Yeah. So if you go into your SSH, SSH directory, delete all the public and private keys. Can I type it here? Oh, you can do yeah. And delete everything. Just everything. Then you need to close the terminal. This is only if you're having issues with yeah. the key gen. Like, don't do this if everything is working for yeah. you. Then uh, restart the terminal. And then if you run gener uh, generate the key gen with the command that Megan showed earlier, and then it should, should work again. So probably the problem, uh, Maria, is that it thinks you are me, and I don't. I am not uh, your user account on GitHub. Yeah, it's weird because I did this of the reviewing everything and it just didn't do anything. I would it might be it might be you have to um, add the key, so you have to restart uh, your terminal to restart the SSH thing to try it again. And if not, then I'll okay. Yeah. Thank you. Also, the other thing you can do is you can generate the key with a different name. So this ID or ED underscore um, some random numbers. You can give that a different name, and then you can try with that instead. But let me go to check on Merlin's node for a second. All right, we're making progress. I can see 10 forks and one pull request already. So um, yeah, if anyone has um, issues or needs help with a specific step, uh, let me know. But it looks like people are doing well so far. Okay, Nora, you think you managed to fork, but you can't push. Um, do you want to type into the chat, yeah, what you're actually, the command you're using and what error you're getting? And Maria, do you have a question or I see your hand raised, but it could be leftover or feel free to unmute. Sorry. No worries.
So Nora, the issue that you're having um, is because you, you want to push the changes to your own fork of my repository. So it should be your own username slash vigilant octo journey. Um, so you'll push the changes to your own fork, then you have to make a pull request into my repository. So hopefully that should work if you change that. Okay, so for anybody who had the problem where they did not have any data in their volume directory, that's probably because I think maybe Ida wasn't clear in the bare bones bash session yesterday when cleaning up your directory after. And I think you've accidentally deleted probably everything in the volume. I'm going to paste some commands now, um, which should allow you to download the data again. We're gonna have to do this on a day by day basis. So make sure you are ready each day to basically run these commands again. So the commands I'm going to post now are only for people who do not have, did not have, for example, the 2B uh, introduction to GitHub directory. So people like Merlin, I think possibly Davide or someone like that also uh, had that problem. Um, so I'm going to post that now. So what the commands are doing is changing into the volume directory, downloading this tar file, or two tar files, or three rather, for today, um, untarring them to decompressing the archives, and then removing the tar files after. But again, only do this if you do not already have um, this 2B directory in there. What other problems have other people had, in other words? So who, who else has had problems? So we three people have been able to make a pull request back into my fork, but maybe people who are having some issues could unmute and we can go through step by step and see where people are having some problems.
So to get started, you um, would have gone to my repository, um, github.com slash Megan E. Michael, Vigilant Octo Journey, and you should have forked that repository. So then you would have a copy of Vigilant Octo Journey on your own GitHub account. Then you could navigate to your own GitHub account and clone that repository, your forked repository, rather than my copy. On your terminal, you would make a new branch um, using git checkout c something like dev or new branch. Then you could make a change to the readme file using the commands that we talked about. Um, so making sure to add the changes and then commit those. Then you would push the changes back to your fork of my repository. And then from the GitHub GUI, you can um, make a pull request back into my repository. I think I'm having a little issue with step two. Okay. Um, I think I forked it and it's at my GitHub. I just don't know what to do next. Okay, cool. Um, can anyone share screen? If I stop sharing screen, would you mind sharing your screen with us? I think other people are probably having the same issue. Okay, I can try that. Let me see. Um, should I share the code or the GitHub? The GitHub. Okay. Um, okay. I think I'm here. Is it working? Or yeah, nice. So you can see that you're in your own account um, because sort of before Vigilant Octo Journey, it says your username instead of Megan E. Michael. So now you need to actually clone that. So you would do that using the green code dropdown menu. So yeah, if you would click on that. Um, you're on SSH, so that's good. You can copy that. And then if you go back to your terminal window. Okay. I can share that one. Hold on. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. Okay. So now you can do git clone. And then, paste. And then do I paste? Yep, exactly. Awesome. Oh, cool. Okay. So then, do you mind just running through the next steps um, all together so that everyone can see it? Yeah. You can just um, keep sharing your screen. Okay. So, so, next, next. so next, you would make a new branch um, with Git checkout. Yeah, exactly. Dash C and then name your new branch. Uh, do I have to put quotations around that? No. That should be good. Oop. Did I spell something wrong? I like to check on. Yeah. Um, sorry, I couldn't see the error at the top of that. Oh. Uh, Let me just, we can go back to the slides and... Oops, sorry, this is a typo from an old version. So checkout is deprecated. So it sh I should have put git switch. Sorry about oh. that. Hopefully that should work now. Looks like it. Yeah, thanks, Yiting. You're right that um, Git switch is from an old version. So thank yeah. you. 
uh, can, can I have a question? So I used branch. I did not use switch, and it created a branch. So I don't know what's the, the the difference now between switch and branch. Does it say um, if you run git status, does it say which branch you're on? Like, are you on the new branch? Uh, one second. Um, uh, it says that I yes on the on, the, on this branch. I'm on the on the new branch. Mm. Uh, when I when when you type help, you say that branch is doing create. Um, yeah, so it's create a branch, new branch. I don't know that. Yeah, I'm not familiar. I usually just use git git switch. But um, if you're if you created a new branch and you're on that branch, then hopefully that should be fine. But if you run into issues later on, I can also look it up for you after what the difference is. Hmm. Okay. okay, but so now we're we're modifying the README file. I believe so. Yeah, awesome. So you can go ahead with that. Okay. Sorry, I'm gonna go back to the the other slide. Sorry for the rapid slide switches. There you go. I forget the next step after I updated the yeah, awesome. So the next thing you need to do is add that. So you can do git add readme dot markdown. Exactly. Um, commit or yes, exactly. Git commit. And yep, a message. Perfect. If not, GitHub will prompt you for a message. Great, and you see that that worked. Um, you changed one file and you added one insertion. So now you wanna push those changes back to your fork. Okay, perfect. So it's giving you this error um, that you need to, because you created the branch on the command line, that's fine, you can use the command that it says there. So oh, get, yeah. yeah. Uh, this is just a one-time thing that you need to do. Cool. Awesome. So then, and from there you can make a pull request on um, GitHub back into my repository. Oh, okay. So... Um, and that's just new pull request? Uh, yes. Um, and you need to make sure actually that you're looking at your fork of the repository. Can you, I think that you oh. need to actually go to your your repo, not my repo. Oh, okay. So pull request from here? Yes. Gotcha. Yeah, exactly. And then if you compare and pull request. Um, you should be able to select um, my main repository from there. 